Peace, 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 people, beautiful people. It's October 9th, 2017. This is Hood Mystic, Keeping It Conscious, Episode 5, The Power of Symbols and the Art of Sigil Making. Uh, this is kind of like my vlog to go along with my blog. The blog, the article is actually on hoodmystic.com, so you can go there now. Um, it's the first um, blog on there. You can just feel free to follow along or just listen, take notes. Um, really, symbolism and sigils, I don't feel like we talk about it enough. Um, it's definitely a solution to any problem that one might face. Um, so when people talk about solutions and things like that, um, this is just my contribution to that. You know, sometimes the answer is there. The answer is always there within the question. And as if we're going to do the research to really figure it out. Um, but I want this thing to be interactive as possible. So any questions, anytime I lose you or you come in and out or whatever the case may be, um, you just want to talk about something that don't make sense or something you disagree with or something you agree with or something you want to add. Like I said, I want this to be interactive as possible um, because we're dealing with solutions and it's not about my ego or sounding smart or being deep. It's really about information that people can go look up for themselves that maybe they're not directed in that way. They're directed in another way. So to me, this is proper direction and something that could absolutely help you if you take it seriously. And I'm going to explain why and how it can help you. And this is for the individual. This is not for me. So what is a symbol? What is symbolism? Uh, symbols represent an idea and convey these ideas quickly without you having to think about it and this could be a logo this could be um, you know within the context of arithmetic when you see a set of numbers and you want to know what to do with them if you have a divide symbol that divide instantly gives you an idea of what to do in that sense even the concept of numbers because there is no real concept of numbers there's only one and so one nine times is literally nine ones but to simplify it you get the symbol of nine so you don't have to actually think about 121 ones or a million and six hundred seven thousand ones you could just think about that particular symbol and your subconscious mind will understand what's happening in that particular moment when you had a paradigm of numbers and a number is a symbol <clears throat> that can mean multiple different things and so another example of symbols it would be words Letters. Letter is a symbol that represents a particular phonetic sound. Instead of having multiple letters to describe a particular letter like A would be probably like A, H or, you know, an elongated A or, you know, A makes different sounds. But based on the context, you know what's going to happen with that A. And if you have a collection of symbols like a r e then instead of you having to do the computations and really understand what's happening you just automatically click and know that that's the word r and everything that has to do with the word and contextual meanings you don't have to look up the definition you automatically can understand what the word r is but you didn't get that instantly you got that through repetition through school constantly going over and taking tests and really developing your mind in that way whether it be mathematics or science or english and things of that nature so these things were once foreign to us, but through the art of repetition, repetition, we gather what we needed to survive in this matrix. We didn't retain all of the knowledge for school, but the fundamental principles we really understood, and that's through the art of symbolism. That's how we learn. Um, so any thought that you have has been 
ingest it and digest it through the art of symbolism so the art of magic and being conscious and understanding symbolism is that we now begin to create our own symbolism we don't rely on methodology and symbolism from other people we realize that we are the gods and creating ways to impact our subconscious mind um, this is one way that we do it by simply really understanding the different symbols and the different meanings and past all of that creating our own meanings for them based upon our own work that we put into the symbols um, so in life is so many symbols placed before you because you maybe you don't understand the power of your subconscious mind but these corporations these marketers and these advertising people they know about your subconscious mind and they play on it every day you may think that you want something based upon clever subconscious mind programming um even if you look at the wendy's thing like the wendy's logo um and wendy's apron you can see like the word mom and what does that do that gets you to feel more comfortable with eating wendy's because it feels like you know one of mom's burgers and maybe consciously you don't feel that way but subconsciously if you find yourself at wendy's feeling good about it it's because you subconsciously feel like you eating your mom's cooking now your body says that you're not but you know your subconscious mind does not know what's right or wrong your subconscious mind just simply goes with the particular programs that's placed before it you know uh things like toyota things like monster drinks and things like that we don't want them because we want them we want them because they encode different letters numbers and symbols that intrigue you and make you want to be interested into it so for that reason alone when we're dealing with magic and real magic we want to begin to start and this is not like the end all be all greatest thing about magic this is like grade a level one type stuff creating your own symbols um, because some people take it further they create their own gods they create their own pantheons they create their own religion based on working with themselves and creating their own world that's more or less what this is about so creating your outer reality you begin to create your inner reality first you don't and so in consciousness and regular everyday thinking people think by getting the house getting the car getting the particular image that that's some form of healing and that's some form of writing the ship uh only if we're able to do the inner work and really understand the power that we have not so much being controlled by our outworldly conditions because this is what happens when we acquire these worldly things and material things without doing the inner work soon as something happens to that particular situation uh you feel sadness now if you know how you've done it if you know how you created the car the house and things of that nature and it's taken away it wouldn't affect you because you knew exactly what you did to create it. This is not, you know, hoping and wishing and praying. This is actually creating your reality from a, from a predicament of power and from a predicament of a surety, not from a predicament of doubt and, you know, weariness and uh, conjecture or a matter of debate this is about you your power and how to actually use it and how it's actually being used against you so and the problem that how i say is being used against you is because if you're not creating for yourself then somebody's creating for you that's just the way it is so it's just important to you know think of yourself as a god and think of yourself as a creator and think of yourself in the proper and different modalities to begin to work with your power uh sigils is number one but it's not about the sigils that 
your mans and them created or Aliester Crowley or any of these dudes with fancy hats and, you know, colorful robes and fancy words and, you know, light tricks and smoke shows and, you know, talking all of these things like he got it like he got it like that. The only thing that he has in reality is your attention. <laughs> He's not benefited. He's not benefiting you like you think. Anything that you do is because you did it and you tweaked it and perfected it your own way. That's not to say that you shouldn't listen to people. You shouldn't get advice from people and peep game from people. But at the end of the day, you have to begin to create these things for your own self because nothing's more powerful than you. These symbols that other people adapt automatically create that entity or that symbol or that power or archetype to be presented as more powerful than you and something that you need to get up under to you know get your rent paid on time or something mundane like that so ultimately when you deal with sigil making and you deal with symbolism you got to deal with it from a serene peaceful mind this is not a it's not a way to be real angst and real weary and, you know, worried about the light bill and things of that nature, because all of that really disrupts the magic or really wanting a man or really, you know, thinking on this thing at a mundane level. This is really key to unlocking the power that's with hidden within you and you can achieve things beyond your wildest imagination. But so why would you be fixated on one small point that it really isn't conducive to your overall growth so it's a a point to just letting go and being real peaceful when you enter into magic so when creating uh your sigils or understanding symbolism you know you have to begin to journal um that's a thing that you know is hard to practice and really understand metaphysics or understand consciousness or understand your growth if you don't journal um, and have something to look back or something to focus on to document your growth. A lot of it is, you know, people just wanting shit and getting shit and just wanting more shit. So ultimately we have to get to a point where we're satisfied in our mundane affairs and accept where we are in life um wherever we are in life and begin to just start to practice and start to create and start to indoctrinate our mind and really control our mind and brainwash ourselves with the life that we lead the life that we want to live and you know sigil making and recognizing symbols and recognizing that experimenting with different symbols and things of that nature shouldn't be a one-time thing it should be documented you know day after day to really understand what symbols actually mean to you so that's important to journal because what you'll notice that each day is different based upon the energy that you bring into it you know when you start to journal um i have countless notebooks um, notebooks that I've lost, notebooks that I still got. And I just look back on some of my earlier writings like, man, I've really grown or man, I was really serious back then. I need to get back how I was when I was hungry because that's when I was really growing. And so that's why it's important to journal and really. So when you say, for instance, you want to deal with the cross or something and really study the cross and what a cross means because generally you don't know what the confederate flag means you don't know what the cross means unless you've personally worked with these symbols and work with it in your subconscious to see what it does for you does it give you nightmares or does it give you did you hit the lottery when you work with the cross who knows you know what i'm saying that could be your totem for lottery to cross and for me it could be a symbol for you know homosexual oppressive religion but if i never heard about a christianity and i just had a cross since i was a kid and it always was there when i got you know money then the cross would mean something completely different to me and you would tell me that you know that cross mean jesus christ and to me it don't mean shit like that so 
ultimately is just a symbol and the symbol means what we want it to mean so we could deal with the symbol at face value or we could start to input and create our own paradigms and our own attitudes within a certain symbol um, i like to challenge people on why a symbol means a certain thing to them and more than not, they have no reason to why, you know, the Confederate flag picks, pisses them off. Oh, it means slavery or whatever the case may be. But, you know, the flag within itself don't mean slavery. It's just red, white, and blue with stars and stripes. What about that pisses you off? Because if it was configured in a whole different way, but it was the same structure and the same lines and the same dimensions, it wouldn't piss you off. But ultimately, it's the same picture. So subconsciously, you need to do more work and stop being programmed by the media and have a program response to particular symbology. And they do it all the time just for, you know a response but ultimately we have to do this work ourselves and we really shouldn't be paying attention to what's going on in the news if we serious about the work so really 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 coming up with your own conclusions is really what i'm trying to that's my like point that i'm trying to make when working with symbols and understanding symbolism um a symbol is just a symbol um and you could get geeked up by another person outside of you to feel a certain type of way about a symbol but ultimately it is you and your intention behind that symbol or what that symbol means to you personally um so moving forward we're gonna get to sigils and sigil making um a lot of people hear sigils and they automatically just feel like it's some demon shit or it's some white boy shit or it's some weird shit or it's real dark or whatever but basically sigil in latin just means a seal and in magic a sigil is just a symbol for magical purposes so a sigil only has as much power as the person who creates it gives it so a sigil is anything that you create that you give power to it has no power over anyone else unless you program it to have power over other people and that's where it gets a little tricky because people make sigils to program subconscious minds all day every day um a sigil is like apple and so if apple come out with a phone made by you know your mama but it had the apple logo on it and you called it an iphone 9 what's the difference how do you know it's just you just buying the symbol you're not really buying unless you like a phone technician and recognize it oh these parts is specifically made by apple or whatever the case may be but at the same time is people in china making the iphone 9 or the iphone 8 right now calling it an iphone 8 or an iphone x but it ain't but it has the same sigils and the same outer appearance of what would be called an iphone so understanding that the sigils that you create is not just a one-time deal thing this is how we begin to work with our subconscious mind begin to and it's not like this is the way that we begin to direct and control and really deal with our subconscious mind because let's be real about this shit who don't want money if you poll everybody down the street like would more money be good would you like ha want to have more money than you got right now everybody would say yes but my question is why don't it happen to everybody us hoping and wishing and wanting it ain't really about shit is it everybody want to have a relationship that's healthy what's the reality 
you in a relationship and it ain't healthy or you ain't got in a relationship more than likely or you you dealing with some crazy shit you know what i'm saying you dealing with a crazy nigga or you dealing with you know what i'm saying this is reality because people not really dealing with magic at all you know what i'm saying magic is some type of taboo or some weird shit that you experiencing but you know you deal with these people and they ain't really happy or really satisfied and nothing the only thing that keeps them together is being up with the status quo to either say i own a house or i'm renting a house or you know i got a car or i'm going on vacation this year or i own a business or all of this shit that you saying to gratify your ego but you know the real shit is that you don't have no control over it and if that shit was to disappear tomorrow your whole motherfucking world to crash because you don't got no inner temple or no inner power. You ain't even built it. Your insides is real decrepit, my nigga. Like, your insides is real looking like a shabby ass addict. You know, in the outer shit, you know, you got it, it's beautiful. It look nice, but let that shit be gone tomorrow. Let somebody take that shit away. Then how you gonna feel? Let somebody snatch your onks away. Let somebody cut your dreads off. Then your whole identity is gone. See, what I'm talking about is the inner shit. The shit that I'm working with, can't nobody take it from me. You know, I can fantasize about all different types of shit. I'm cool. I fantasize about all different types of shit. Like horrible shit now, because I'm just so... Feel so strong that can't shit, can't shit break me. Because I already done experienced it. But more to the point understanding that programming your subconscious mind is how you get it done and how to program your subconscious mind is to have a particular address and know how to get that address punched in correctly without conscious mind getting it away because you know what i'm saying you can do them affirmations all day I got a million dollars. It's a check coming in the mail that day. You know, all of that shit all day long. That shit is exhausting. That shit is not fun. That shit is not magic. That shit is hoping and praying and wishing, but feeling good about it. Let's keep it real. You ain't getting shit from it. You get no results from it. Because if that was the case, motherfuckers would be doing affirmations. And that would be the word for the day. President Donald Trump would have been impeached because we all done affirmed that he's a horrible president. It doesn't matter what we affirm. Have we controlled, commanded, and directed ourselves to not give a fuck about Donald Trump if that nigga want to, you know, set his goddamn hair on fire because it ain't real. I, it don't fucking matter to me because I'm so possessed and so in tune with myself and so at peace with myself. It's 2017. I'm living in the future. What I'm talking about is technology. These niggas talking about affirmations is talking about motherfucking rotary dial phones. That ain't even rotary dial phones. That shit is like talking to the motherfucking can. Shit's not advanced at all. So like really you know a nigga can talk to you about map making all day planning and coming up with proper order and how we going to do this and you know paperwork and have you uh, declared your status or you know you got money can you live in costa rica you know all of these fancy things we could do within the matrix besides fucking work with your magical abilities right i don't understand that because let's keep it all real we all don't have the assets and liabilities to just do all this fantastical shit so that mean that i'm supposed to feel bad because i ain't in costa rica with you real talk you know what i'm saying because i ain't living in the forest i'm supposed to feel bad or I ain't in LA and Beverly Hills or something. I'm supposed to feel bad because I don't know millionaires. I'm not a billionaire conscious person or whatever the case may be. I'm going to tell you what I am more than anybody. I'm free. And what I mean by free is that 
I'm able to think and feel and say whatever. And, and I know that I live forever. I know that, you know, you can't kill me. <laughs> I know for a fact you can never kill me. You can kill my body. You get my body all day long. I don't give a shit about my body or this material life, but I exist on multiple different planes on the existence. And that's something that can't nobody take away from me. And that's something that, you know, a, a rich person or, you know, a, a wealthy person might not ever fully understand because he's so in love with the material world. He's so comfortable in the material world. And I feel sorry for them people. I feel sorry for those people that's so ingrained with what's going on in this mundane existence and have no concept of their inner life and their immortal existence. That hurts. So I want to really break this down one more time for the sigil making and really give it to more of like a metaphor or a real understanding of what sigil making is, how important it is to really achieve and desires because it's more of just doing, you know, spell work, honey jars, or, you know, doing whatever you see motherfuckers doing on Facebook to get results. This is about something that you create for yourself that number one, you don't tell a soul about your sigil work. This is for you. This is not for anybody to understand. This is for you to understand. And the basic way that I could just break it down what sigil making is and you know I'm always down for one-on-one -on -one consultation where we can if it's something where you want personal explanations but just for the context of having like you know just to talk about it I'm not just going to get into a step by step by step of what you should do and how to do it as many different ways to do it you can use symbols to make symbology you could do it from your imagination just you know just flowing off the top to do symbology or you could do the letters where you write your intent and cross out the different letters and form symbols with the letters to create a symbol and you know it's all about the effort so you know you could use color pencils or paint you just don't want to just scribble some shit in a notebook and feel like you did some work you feel me like you want to put some effort into it you know what i'm saying like because apple computer is just an apple but you think that shit was just like just some old simple shit that they just put down no it probably took them you know they probably perfect and work on that logo every year and you wouldn't even be none the wiser you know with different dimensions and you just never know like this whole game is crazy but the example i want to give you uh the subconscious mind is equivalent to you know the gps what is the gps the gps gonna get me to where i need to get to step-by-step -step directions all i have to do is give it the address now the address is a symbol within a symbol now the address to you might be 186 fountain drive but in reality the address is longitude and latitude points on a map so it's complicated to understand the exact longitude and latitude point on a map to find the address so it's more simpler to give me a symbol called an address so the longitude and latitude point is your desire it's more simple to come up with a, a, a statement of intent and then from that statement intent to be broken down into a sigil that sigil represents the address to your lot your longitude and latitude point you know is more complicated to Remember your latitude and longitude point is simpler to understand your address. Okay. So we input that address into the GPS. 
we now then can trust that we're going to end up in our destination in the quickest, most routed way. We trust our GPS. Now, the GPS is likened to your subconscious mind, your inner temple, your inner God, your innermost, your God within. How much do you niggas trust that? How much do you trust that? Do you trust it? You trust your GPS more than you trust your inner God system. And that's all we're trying to get you to work with and get you to understand how to really activate and work with your inner God system. And this ain't about me. This is about you really understanding and doing your research and now beginning to do the work and stop putting your focus on the outside world and start putting your focus on the inner world. It really don't matter about your mama now. Do it. It really don't matter about your family now. Do it. It really don't matter about your job now. Do it. It really don't matter if you don't got a job right now. Do it because you know you can't. You don't even, you could bypass the whole job phase working with your inner power. You go straight to business owner. You know, you go straight to successful business when you start working with your inner power and really working with your imagination and creativity. Cause that's what it's about is really taking your imagination and creativity and putting it around a structure to impact your subconscious mind, to bring you about real results and real peace of mind and real trust because it ain't about having the shit if you don't know how you got it because once the shit is gone you asked out because you don't know how you got that shit right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's better to know how you got that shit because if it ever get taken from you again you know exactly how to get it back and that's what it's talking about it's not teaching you it's not this these conversations you know you know Hundreds of videos and hundreds of conversations that we have is not about restaurant serving you up a wonderful fish dinner. It's taking your ass out and getting on your fish boots and uh, getting your bait and your hook and hitting the goddamn lake and fishing for your goddamn self. And that's better because you might ha not have $17.99 for swordfish. You might not have shit, so you better figure out how to get it and create it for yourself. Um, um, just one more thing before we finish this build. When when setting out your intentions and setting out your magic and things like that. Um, avoid the words no and not. It's like, so let's go back to the GPS. We'll be programming our GPS. So say you want money and you put in your GPS money. No, say if you put in your GPS, I don't, I don't not, or how should I, how should I put that? Like, like you wouldn't tell your GPS that you don't want to go to your destination. So av avoid the words like, I don't want to be broke or I don't want to not be single because your GPS is just going to be like, well, okay. Like it it's only about affirming and trust and repetition and dealing with this thing on a consistent daily basis. So it's not about what you don't want and what you're afraid of like it's not about protection it's about really attacking and really striking and really working and really creating and forming this is all magic and imagination so why you would be imagining motherfuckers attacking you i don't know but i ain't like i ain't <laughs> i'm i'm just working with my magical modalities and really working with my power and understanding my power and really doing the work, you know, during this whole conversation part of we, me and my girl, we created sigils ourselves and charging them through just the conversation and the build and, you know, doing our own personal rituals. And, you know, hopefully we can get more people into, you know, dealing with solutions and different things and different builds. And, you know, these conversations like this, they grow, you know what I'm saying? So just be, be prepared to learn and, you know, 
learn more about yourself, learn more different ways to work with yourself and learn better ways to just be happy and successful and free and, you know, prosperity and abundance and all of that, you know, because that's what's within us all. And if you don't know how to work with it, then that's okay because we all can learn. This ain't about no fancy gimmicks or tricks or give you the game all kind of contorted and misconstrued and make you think that you got to pay me or whatever. And y'all can listen to people that make you think that they more powerful than you. Like that's good for y'all. You know what I'm saying? That's probably where y'all at, but I'm coming to y'all letting you know that you powerful and you could achieve any and all things through you if only you knew how to work with yourself if only you knew how to program yourself um even to the meditation the guided meditations that you might listen to stop listening to guided meditations start making your own guided meditations we all got android and iphone phones that you know can record and we can put them things on loop and go to sleep listening to it there's so much that we could do to start to take control of our mind not our conscious mind our subconscious mind that you know i'm here for it and i'm here to talk about it so with that being said man you ain't gonna hear no bitch ass shit from me or no weak ass shit from me everything that i speak is through power and through my black ass skin and everybody that i know got the same skin as me and when i see that skin i see the power whether it's light shade or dark shade what i do i see that melanin and i know it's on and popping so and from that you know it's power so ain't no weakness from me ain't no defeat from me it's all victory so if you want to build if you want to talk i'm here for it man and that is episode five man symbolism and sigil making y'all have a good night peace